All right, so Texas A&M, Tyler and Garrison. Tyler and Garrison, five fish today. Five fish, good job today. 11 pounds and 14 ounces. Let's see what that puts you at. Look at that. 12th place. 12th well, place, you want to put the GoPro on that? Look at that. Yeah, the GoPro's on, isn't it? <laughs> wow, 12th place, that stinks, huh? Ah! Well, folks, um, 12th place uh, stinks. Um, they took top 11. So, you know, we we are we're very grateful that, that God provided the fish He did, but uh, we do wish a few more ounces while I came in the boat. Second chances. Second chances are the opportunities granted to us when failure plagues us on the first try. We as anglers are not always given second chance opportunities. In this sport, it's either make. 40 pounds, 13 ounces, Tyler Anderson and Josh Benson, Texas a &M. Or break. Oh, I... The fish show no mercy. It's our job as anglers to make the most of these second chances. What we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. And I refuse to stay down and give in to failure. This is my time. Welcome to College Fishing on Mighty Lake Texoma. Well, what is going on everybody? And welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing Tournament Series. This is the stop number two of the FLW College Tournament Circuit on Lake Texoma. Mighty, mighty Lake Texoma. It is a big lake and can get rough real quick but hopefully this week i can show you guys quite a few things on how to catch more fish and hopefully i do well in my tournament as well now if you guys are not part of the tyler's Real fishing squad yet make sure you guys click the uh, the button right here to subscribe and click the bell as well to get notifications that way you guys never miss a single upload that i have youtube as we all know goes through its ups and downs and so it's always good to have you guys behind me every step of the way now as you guys may remember from previous videos uh, i barely missed qualifying for the championship at stop number one at Sam Rayburn. I was one place out, I finished 12th, and they only qualified top 11. And so I'm here at stop number two, hoping to qualify uh, for real. Uh, you know, there's a chance that I'll qualify at stop number one because somebody throughout the three tournaments may have to drop out that qualified ahead of me. So there's a very, very slim chance, but there's not a chance worth taking. Uh, I wanna be out here, I wanna catch fish, and I wanna win that thing. Every single time I go in the water, I wanna win that tournament. If you go into a tournament, just kind of like tournament mindset for you guys, if you're going into a tournament or just a fishing day in general with thoughts of, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna catch them, I don't know how well I'm gonna do, I promise you every single time you're not gonna do even as good as you think you will. That's why I always go into to days like this, even if I know they're gonna be tough, with, you know what, I'm gonna figure something out, I'm gonna catch fish. And so that's kind of our mindset today going into it. I have no clue what these fish are gonna be doing. I know the, the weather coming up the next few days is going to be absolutely horrible. But we're gonna take you guys along the journey with us. Let pre-fishing begin. and I go down in this water and I am not coming back. On, but not, maybe it'd be, maybe it'd be keeper. Probably not though. Just kind of working on my lane right here, so maybe we figured something out. Just gotta expand on it. I don't think one fish is a, is a pattern. I think two fish is a pattern. So if we get a second fish on this. I know that I can. Uh, Boys and girls, midday update here from Lake Texoma. The fish are not making it easy on me. You know what? They, they never do. They, that's the point of fishing is to figure out the puzzle. And this puzzle today has about 5,000 pieces I'm trying to put together. But I, I've tried all sorts of things. So basically what I've tried is 
uh, square bills, rattle traps, uh, spinner baits, uh, a jig, and of course an Alabama rig. And then I did throw a little uh, swim bait on a jig head kind of for a bit around a marina. And these fish don't seem to be biting anything. And so what I know about these lakes, especially in Oklahoma, is that fish feed shallow. Now, in most lakes you go to in the country, fish are gonna feed shallow, unless it's summertime and they're, they're feeding out deep on, on ledges and such. But I'm, I'm fishing shallow and these fish are not feeding. And kind of looking forward into the tournament day, one thing that I love to do and actually shouldn't say love to do, I should say like have to do for tournaments is you have to look ahead to the weather at the tournament. So if you're pre-fishing and weather that's beautiful and you're, you're whacking them on a frog and then you get to tournament day and you have a cold front blow through and you haven't done any research to find places that would work when a cold front hits, then you're, you're done for. Ugh. Just hit the bounce. So like I was saying there before I got stuck on the uh, in the rock, basically you want to look ahead for weather in the future. And so I'm looking ahead and I'll show you guys some screenshots of the weather on my phone here. It ain't looking good. We're looking for about uh, a 30 degree drop in temperature from about 60 to 29, 32 degrees, which is not fun. And also we're looking at a straight north wind at about 18 miles an hour. So this lake's gonna get rough and it's gonna get cold real fast which means that I'm gonna to have to find spots that these fish are gonna kind of pull back off to or just slide back off to uh, and kind of, I'm assuming, suspend. And I'll catch them that way. So catching fish today is not of utmost priority. Today is more about kind of looking around the lake, finding spots that could work in both weather like we have today and weather that we're gonna have in the tournament. Because today doesn't matter. I mean, like, sure, making a fun video like this is, is good and hopefully catching a few fish it's good for you guys. Oh, dang it, there's so many rocks here. Oh, that's a rock. What you really wanna do is hit your outboard on the rocks. It's the best way to best way to do it. So yeah, I'd love to catch fish for you guys. And of course, I'll probably catch a few more throughout the day as we as we hit some better looking stuff. And this is good looking stuff to me. We got tires, we got rocks. I think my A-Rig is just a little bit too heavy because I'm getting stuck almost every cast. So I might need to switch out the jig heads on top of this A-Rig. No, no, no. We're gonna pick up the spinner bait. And we're gonna spin it around this thing. Spin a bait, spin a bait. I wanna get spin a bait. We're gonna switch spinner bait colors here real quick. Get rid of the chartreuse blade and go to more of a shad. And we're gonna get out one more rod. I know, Tyler. One more rod, yes. I have more. <laughs> I'm gonna get out a rod for a wacky rig. See if I can flick it around these docks here and get a, a bass that's kind of suspending before I go into spawn. Just like Jordan Lee won at Lake Hartwell, the Bassmaster Classic. See if these fish are on any sort of similar pattern. Oh, dang it. That felt really cool. I was like, oh, something's coming on and he got it. Nope, on a rock. All right, new A-Rig in three, two, one. All right, got a new uh, new A rig. I actually kept the same A rig frame. It's the uh, the umbrella rig, Flash Mob Junior has the blades on it. But and I also kept the two dummies. So with the FLW rules, we can throw an A rig. Most tournaments you can't, but FLW college you can. But you can only have three hooks. So you see the bottom three I have hooks here, and the top two I do not. Hopefully those fish come up from the bottom and nail the ones that do have hooks. So that's the uh, that's the plan here. We're gonna unpower pull ourselves and hit this bank. Rob, I've been nothing but absolutely... Oh, I got one! Oh, I got one! Do I? On the square bill! It feels like a catfish, to be honest. I don't know what this is. Oh, no, it's a bass. Someone's coming. I played off like I don't have one. <laughs> that guy definitely saw. <laughs> See what I did there, folks? I had a bass, but I just played it off like I'm just, oh, I'm just reeling in my bait. That's not a bad fish either. I'd take five of them. Nice. A little over two. Little chunker. Little chunker on the square bill. All right, well, one fish on the A rig and one on the square bill. Do I know what that means? No, not at all. But I'll take both of them, that's for sure. Very cool. See you, bud. Go find your mama. Let her know I want her for Saturday. 
you just always want to make sure your spots are as secretive as possible during a tournament or during practice that way you're not giving away anything oh another one that's a day one or my step oh, oh i'm stuck that's what it is i'd love to eliminate some water and right now i i have one fish on a main lake point and one fish way in the back so that doesn't really help me eliminate anything I want a small mouth. Come on, just give me a one. One smallie. That's all I ask for. One little small mouth bass. Actually, I don't want one little one. I want five giant ones. Whew! Just made a long run. So for my long run, I'm a little bit banged up. I'm going to sit here for a second. That was kind of a, or a long, rough run. Hopefully you guys can hear me in the, the wind. But Today's been a rough practice day. Have I figured much out? No, I haven't figured much out. And I haven't been able to eliminate much water either, but it has been good to get on a new lake and kind of figure out where these fish are located at. Hopefully the next two or three hours in the water, I can figure out a little bit of a pattern and maybe catch a small mouth or two uh, before tomorrow when the weather's gonna get nuts. So let's catch some fish. Woo! This BB1 casts far. I love it. Do I have a fish? I've got a fish, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, I definitely got a fish. What do I have? A bass! It's a bass! All right. A keeper bass too, I think. Just as I was thinking that I wasn't gonna catch one on the shoreline until the point, I got one before the point. All right. Yeah. Not a big guy. But you know what? Oh, and he was literally barely hooked. Probably gonna fall out. Oh, he's good. Very cool. Awesome. I switched up to the little uh, little rock crawler crankbait by uh, Six Sense, the curve, I believe it is. Got that fish. So right now I have, oh boy, I got three fish on three separate things. So I'm not eliminating any water. But maybe it's telling me that I have to cover water. Maybe that's the thing here. That I'm not going to catch five fish in one area. I catch one fish in one area and I keep moving along. So we'll see. So I didn't have the camera on, of course. And uh, I lost about a three pounder here on the, on the bridge. On the black and, not the black and blue, the, uh, the chartreuse blackback square bill. So we're going to see if there's any more fish in that kind of close proximity area on the bridge. Because oftentimes fish don't... Uh, don't stay very spread out on bridges. They'll kind of bunch up in little small areas. And oftentimes it's, it's the same areas over the, over the years. And so I got the one bite over by that stump. So that could be a little area where some fish are. And then uh, I'm gonna keep fishing for another 100 yards. See if I get another bite. If I do, I know this bridge has fish. Now of course every bridge has fish, but it'd just be nice to know to have one spot where I can come and get a keeper or two. Oh my, I got something big. I got something big. Uh, there's no way it's a bass. That's a bass, it's a giant. Come on. What you gonna be? What you gonna be, striper or catfish? I do not know. Catching up with me though. He's coming, wow. He's coming to me. He looks like a catfish. Like it's really, really running like a catfish. What do we got? Oh yeah, it's gotta be. Oh wait, no way. Ah, oh, it is a catfish. Gosh. Oh, man. Is it? Yeah, it is. Ah. Big old channel cat. Time to get the pliers out. See ya. Thanks for tearing up my crankbait. Gotta get my pirate's booty. That is all she wrote for uh, day one of practice, so my thoughts so far I'm very confused because usually I can figure out something these fish are doing but right now I caught four fish or really three but hooked one more doing four sort of similar things all moving baits but like not the same areas not the same the cadence not the same color so uh, I don't know what to think right now to be honest but that's what makes this game fun because it's a challenge if it was easy anybody would do it so we were leaving the ramp we launched a free state park ramp or I launch, I don't know why I said we. And there's all these like creepy abandoned houses. Or not houses, like, I don't know, little motels. 
that the park used to use, I guess, and they they are creepy. They're all run down of plants in them and stuff, so definitely wouldn't want to spend the night here. We're gonna head back to a family friend's house that I'm staying at. Super nice house, kind of out in the country. It takes like 10 minutes to go down the dirt road, but we'll see you guys back at the house, kind of talk about our day a little bit more and rig some tackle. What would a fishing trip be without uh, stopping for gas every three hours? <laughs> I swear that I fill up my truck and my boat like every day. It is crazy. You guys wonder why I can't collaborate with anybody because I spend a lot of money on gas. All the days when gas was a dollar and 46 cents. That was, I think the lowest I ever filled up for was a dollar, a dollar 36. I think it was the lowest I ever filled up for. Comment below the lowest gas price for unleaded you've ever seen. Well, everybody, it is, uh, what time is it? 9.59. We're at our house here in uh, Oklahoma. Super nice house. I don't want to say the name of the people that live here, but super, super grateful to let us stay here for the week. Uh, Clark and Mitch joined us. I could take you guys on a little tour. Oh, I can't see with my face lit up. Oh, I got a text message. Here we go. Probably see brand new Skeeter. Super awesome combo, but Mitch and Clark are here. It is really hard to see when my face is lit. Day one of practice was definitely not as uh, as easy as I'd hoped it would be, but you know what, that seems to happen in college tournaments is that they don't always take us to the easiest lakes at the easiest times. And I'm sure Texoma is gonna be fire in about two or three weeks, but right now these fish are in a funk and this cold front is not gonna help. So I say we hit the hay, maybe do some editing before we go to bed, and we'll see you guys in the morning. We are starting off day two next to a good old popo. Always a solid move. Always a solid move. Oh man, I'm feeling optimistic today. So we, we focused up north a little bit yesterday. Found some stuff, but I want to focus down south of Garrison again today. Garrison, my partner, he's joining us at the ramp. We're here with Clark and Mitch. And uh, I'm feeling good. So I say we get to the lake, get on the water. So we're at the boat ramp. Garrison has not arrived yet. The traffic in Dallas is worse than he thought. And he's coming up from his house in Dallas to meet me at the ramp. So I got all the rods laid out on the deck. We got everything from A-rigs to square bills to flipping jigs to finesse shaky heads, wacky rigs, spinner baits, medium diving crankbaits. Like we are, we're all over the place today. I just talked to a guy who's literally from like, he, he grew up on Texoma. So he knows like everything about this lake and he's catching them. He won a tournament with 19 pounds like a week and a half ago. Now the fish were in a different state then, but he said every day during practice he's been catching 20 pounds. So this guy seemed to be telling the truth. Kind of from years around the tournament scene, you can kind of tell when guys are, are shooting the crap with you. But uh, this guy seemed to be telling the truth and he said anybody can catch two to three pounders, which is interesting because I had trouble catching two to three pounders yesterday. <laughs> So hopefully it's not that easy, but uh, as I was saying, the, the weather is changing drastically tomorrow. Even, even he admitted that. So we'll see if either of our bites are still there. So just kind of the goal today is just to find some areas that potentially could have fish moving off of or moving on to when the cold front hits. So I'm going to clean my graphs right now with some wave away. If I have it, I don't know where I put it. Pearl's muddy today. Oh, Pearl got real muddy. Holy crap. We had to drive through some mud to get here. Now the garrison's here, we put the boat in the trailer. Boat, the boat, the trailer in the water. Is the button water. All right, stop. We are launched. And this water looks nasty down here too. Oh, it's not what I want to see. Well, folks, I am sitting here wondering how this happened. I just deleted all the footage that I filmed the whole day so far. So, here's a little rundown. We get, I'm just making sure no other boats are around. I don't know, how, I just deleted, I just deleted all that footage. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't all that much, but I did catch two of the nicer fish I've caught so far. So I caught, you know, two fish, about two and a half or three pounds. Uh, one on, actually, one on a jerk bait and one on a shaky head. Dang it, those were cool catches. And then I, and then I shook another one off or set the hook and missed it, so. Um, it's about 11.30. I, oh gosh, man, that's the first time I've ever, the first time I've ever clicked delete all instead of delete last. I guess I can't have a conversation while I try to delete footage at the same time. Oh, now I've got to get another fish for a good thumbnail. Ah, crap. All right, so we have ran all the way down lake uh, to kind of smallmouth area. Garrison's PB smallmouth is what, a six pounder? Yep. You got a six pounder. Was that your first smallmouth ever? Yep. <laughs> His first smallmouth ever was on this point, six pounder, about the same time of the year. So we have kind of a largemouth pattern going, and uh, we're going to see if a smallmouth pattern can evolve, emerge, whatever. Either way. Ev evolve as well. Where's the net? Where's the net?
up with that? Folks, got a fish catch for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here, come get, we'll get a good thumbnail of like looking at the fish or something. <laughs> Folks, this thing is this thing is almost a bit, a bit over three pounds, is my guess, because of that belly. That thing is fat so. Look how fatso, dark fatso. he is, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna need a picture with this one with my nice camera. That us a chunky dunk. We're gonna let her go. See you, big girl. Yeah. So Garrison took me back to his main lake spot and said, dude, there's giant smellmouth here. Well, ended up catching a uh, big largemouth. <laughs> Not gonna complain for sure, but we have a little bit of a pattern going. Hopefully the rest of the day can uh, we can put something together. Nice to be all five days were awesome. That was a fish, 100%. You think so? I'm, nine, I'm like literally 100%. On what? Jig? Jig. Hold down my pants. <gasps> You've been exposed. Do you have any more buffs on here? Oh boy. What? Tournament postponed. What does that mean? Kevin said the tournament's postponed until Sunday. What? Yeah. Tournament postponed until Sunday for weather. Well, I lead worship Sunday. <laughs> oh boy. We gotta, we gotta figure out something. Folks, tournament's postponed. Oh boy. That adds a horseshoe, or a wrench, or whatever it is. A horseshoe. It adds a horseshoe into things. <laughs> Who's that? Nope. Y'all? You see the tournament's on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, who knows what the core front will do, though? We'll see. Every spot. Yeah. They didn't see it. Yeah, so we had a boat next to us or behind us. We didn't want to show them our fish. I caught one because they saw that I was throwing, but they said they were catching a few as well. Kind of the, the deal is, you guys probably noticed my videos. If we pass by somebody and they say, How you how you doing? You catching them today? You always say no, whether you are or not. Like saying yes either makes them think they're doing the right thing, or saying no makes them super confident, which oftentimes the tournament day can lead to making the wrong decisions when you're too confident. So I don't know. As I always say no. And so they passed by us and I just caught about a two pound or two and a half. Probably two and a half. That was a chunky fish. And uh, I'm the shaky head once again. I'll kind of explain to you guys at the end of today how I caught my fish in terms of the shaky head. But it's cool to see that every st spot we stop on that has, you know, chunk rock like this, kind of slate-ish, slate rock um, with some chunk to it, it has good fish. So it's good to see. We're going to move along. So cameras are going away and my flip flops are going on. Alright, camera's going. The, any link or product that I link. Oh my. Where you going? Popped off. He popped off. That was that was a good fish. Yeah. Deeper diving first cast. Yeah, first cast to deeper diving. Wow. Alright. Garrison, you just fart? Oh. Oh, that smells. <laughs> Garrison just ripped a nice one. Things that happen on the boat. Actually, we're on the land right now. We're back here at the ramp. Kind of finished off our day. I had one little fish there at the end that got off. The, I, I, I wouldn't say little. It felt big on a, a medium diving crankbait. And so there's, I'd say the majority of boats are, are back. There's still quite a few in the parking lot here that are hanging around. But I'm still waiting back on my church to let me know um, if they got a replacement worship leader. And so I committed to this worship event, man, like two months ago. And so 
Uh, I know the Lord honors commitment, and so if it turns out that I have to go back to College Station on Sunday to lead worship, then that's how it goes. Um, I kind of wish that, you know, they could find somebody, and I really hope they do, but uh, we'll see right now. But I kind of want to explain real quick if I don't get the opportunity to because we don't fish the tournament. Kind of explain how we caught our fish today. So the, uh, the spinning combo that I was throwing is the Lose Tournament Speed Spin. It's actually discontinued, but they have uh, just as good of a one in the Lose Mach 2 spinning reel. And then I was throwing that on uh, some 15-pound braid to 8-pound fluorocarbon leader on uh, the Lose, I believe it is, it's the, the Team Lose Custom Pro 7-foot medium heavy spinning rod. Awesome, awesome combo for this little shaky head. And I'll show you guys the shaky head here. It's a spot remover shaky head. About, uh, I believe it's a quarter round shaky head with a tiny little straight tail finesse worm. So hopefully if we have a tournament Sunday and I can fish, that's definitely going to be a big, a big player in our tournament. And then we kind of caught them on various things, kind of on a jerk bait. But then the good crank bait that I think is going to be a huge player the next few days as this cold front rolls through is a slightly deeper diving, slightly less uh, wide wobbling crank bait. And that is the Six Cents. Uh, what is this one called? The Curve 66? Curve 64? I forgot what it's called. The, uh, the curve something and is a, uh, it's a bad little crank bait. It is about to start pouring, so uh, I'm probably going to end the video here. And then kind of after this, you guys will find out if I'm fishing the tournament and if I'm not. But make sure you guys are subscribed, and we'll see you guys in a second. My brother, it was Steve Aoki and designer, you know who that is? <laughs> you went to a designer concert? It was terrible.